IG Live day 358 meaning we got I forgot how many days left I can't do math right now can we do math seven days to go um okay so wow seven days to go it's crazy Okay, so what I do actually want to talk about, I got a request by uh, someone that they wanted me to talk more about human design things. And I was trying to think of like, what am I going to talk about? Because I have like, you know, done a lot of videos in the past of talking about the basics of human design, strategy, authority. Um, I also talk a lot about what it's like to be a projector, uh, just because I am a projector. So that is something like every time I find out something about myself, then I, you know, share it um and so like if you do want to just like dive on some of the human design stuff that i have already talked about you can go to my youtube link and then in there i have like separated all the lives into categories and there's a human design section in addition i have been a guest in a mini podcast so also link in bio you can see all the podcasts i've been in and there's some that i have talked about human design in there especially the most recent one um with that Jacqueline it's called the art of and that like that first episode we have a second episode coming next week which is like again I talk about human design in that one but it's where I talk all about it like the basics what it is and how to get kind of started so what I do want to talk about in this particular live in human design so in human design um, if you have not, if you don't have your chart, uh, you can go get your chart at mybodygraph.com and you put in your birthday, time, and location, and then you'll get the information. So in human design, we have something called authorities, and authorities is your decision-making process. And I actually want to tap into one particular authority for this slide because I think it is really powerful to talk about. Um because this authority is actually about like statistics don't quote me on statistics but it's about half the population and the other half population does not have this authority and i feel like that there is a giant miscommunication a giant miss high five when it comes to this one so i'm going to talk about the emotional authority so this is basically this video is about the emotionals versus non-emotionals so half the populations are emotional authority and then the other half population were non-emotionals, um, also known as empaths. So it, what does that mean? It means like if you have the solar plexus uh, center, which is like one of the bigger triangles on, um, so there's gonna be on one side when you're looking at the chart on the right side, there's two triangles. There's a smaller one, and then there's a bigger one. So the bigger one, that's the solar plexus. If that one's colored in, it means that you have an emotional authority. If that one is white, it means that you do not have an emotional authority, and that center is either open or undefined, depending on if you have gates coming out of it. So if you have some gates, like some lines, colored lines coming out of that center, it means it's undefined. So you have some properties of that center, but that center is not um, it's not your authority and it's not it's not the fine um, and then if you have no gates like mine then it means it's completely open and you taking on the energy from the outside world so I'm going to explain a little bit about the difference between the two so emotional authority so what does that mean emotional authority means like before making a decision you are meant to ride your emotional wave each person has a unique emotional wave uh, depending on what channels you have on in your human design and that can like really give you specifics on your emotional wave but then again it's still like that gives you a little bit more information about your emotional wave but there's still more that you need to just like experiment on your own and figure it out on your own of what is your emotional wave and so you go through highs and lows and you are meant to make decisions after you've wrote your wave. So you're not meant to make decisions from a place of high emotions or low emotions. Uh, it's more like a place of neutrality. And sometimes that can be like just sleeping on it or that can be a couple days, a couple weeks. Everybody is different. And also I think it depending on the situation that you are making a decision. Um, 
And so a lot of like emotional authorities, like especially those who are not aware of human design, tend to make spontaneous decisions. Not everybody, but sometimes, you know, you do. And usually what ends up happening is either a couple of days later you regret it. You're like, oh, wait, I didn't want to actually do this. Or or the decision you made, like the outcome didn't come out the way you wanted it to. And yeah, and so this is why it's like really important to ride. Like I always like say like, for people who like first start coming to see me for human design whether it's a reading or they're my one-to-one client like the first thing I say is like minimum sleep on it just that's a good place to get started especially because like you know kind of like going to be like oh wait till you've ridden the emotional wave and if it's something that you have never done before you can be very much impatient and you know like unsure of what your wave is and you know like you may not actually like want to listen to it and still make spontaneous decisions so to get started just sleep on it and then start paying attention to your emotions start paying attention like do they fluctuate within a day do they fluctuate within a week like how does it look like is it um associated with like your if you are female is it associated with your menstrual cycle is it not like there's like these little things that you can just like begin to pay attention to And the other thing about emotional authorities, and I really think that non-emotionals, you guys need to listen to this one, is that those who have an emotional authority, you can't explain your emotions at all times. And that's okay. You may be feeling sad one day and you cannot explain why you're feeling sad. So for my non-emotionals who are listening to this, like especially those who are in a, excuse me, hair in my mouth that was yeah. especially those who are in a partnership and you know you're with your partner and you're just like oh like you know like tell me how you feel and like why are you feeling the way you're feeling and your partner is like well I don't know and they are an emotional authority so emotionals cannot always explain their emotions and the other thing that I'm going to also mention for non-emotionals is that because emotional authority you're meant to ride the wave right and so when it comes to like the non-emotionals it's like sometimes if they don't understand that you have an emotional authority they may be rushing you to make a decision right everything is so fast-paced these days like we need to make quick decisions like whether you're working in an office and you're getting your emails and you're like well have you decided or you know like what's the next step what are we doing or when it comes to like buying house or making a move and all those things and it's like if you again have non-emotionals in your life which is possible because half the population is one or the other you may either have like a partner or your family members or you know other people rushing you to make a decision and so for my non-emotionals like make sure that you allow them to have the space to not rush through their decision making process and that if throughout that process they are changing their mind know that that is okay so like if they're going through like one day where they're saying one thing and the next day they're saying another it's almost like don't take each thing super seriously like don't cling on to it just allow them to ride their wave and if you know that that they are emotional authority then guide them towards that guide them to be like okay like this is this is this is what you're saying today like continue to sit on it like see how you feel tomorrow and it's a way to hold space for them and then the other thing is that when it comes to like any arguments or conflicts with emotionals it's very important that you know you have your space for you to ride your wave and not not to you know like try to like again like fix the situation right away because emotionals you have no problem with confrontation and so when it comes to being with another non-emotional non-emotionals we don't like confrontation i'm not a non-emotional i don't like confrontation but sometimes in certain situations we have to do it you know like we we stand up for ourselves but in terms of emotionals like 
if you are fighting with someone, definitely like just take a pause, walk away from the situation, process your feelings, process your emotions, like ride through your wave. Because as you ride through your wave, it's from place a place of trigger then you can actually begin to understand yourself a little more. You can begin to see the situation differently because if you're trying to continue to solve the issue while in your emotional high or low, then it's just going to, it's not going to go anywhere because you're not actually seeing what's going on. And so it is important to like ride the wave. But then also if you are dealing with a non-emotional to understand that if they say that they need space, to process what happened because they don't like confrontation give them that space like not everything needs to be fixed like right in the moment and so and the other thing with so with non-emotionals is that you guys are all the empaths so you feel another person's emotions you take on the emotions from the outside world and you reflect them back and so when you are with an emotional it can be overwhelming as taking on their emotions especially if you live with them so if you live with an emotional you take on subconsciously that and so it is also important for you to ride away when making decisions if you're living with an emotional authority or to at least step out of the environment Um, and go to an environment that you are in your own space completely to make a decision so that you're not plugging into the the other person's emotional authority and their wave and so I know I feel like I'm like kind of jumping everywhere but and so like yeah emotionals you have to understand that you know sometimes like somebody who's non-emotional who is an empath may need their space may need to like walk away from the situation and won't need to like won't want to have it resolved and fixed in the moment because if the emotions are high like if there's like a lot of emotions happening it can be very overwhelming for somebody who is taking all those emotions in even though they don't belong to um you belong to them and so and then the other thing that's really interesting with non-emotionals is that like because we mirror back the emotions this is something I recognize in the past is like, so we mirror it back to people um, because we're giving the, the breadcrumbs to that other person. So if you've noticed, like if you have five different people ask you the same question about how you feel about something and you notice that each of those times you give a different answer that's like a different answer and with a different emotion that's because you are taking in the emotions of the other person and mirroring them back to them and so the only way for you to actually know how you really feel about the situation is when you sit in your own little bubble in your own little environment and then you reflect on the situation and see how you feel so if you're talking to one person and it comes off as bitterness and another person comes off frustration it's basically you're they're bitter or frustrated or angry or something or excited or happy about something whether they're consciously aware of it or not like something in their life and it doesn't have to do with the situation at all but all you're doing is you're taking that the theme emotion that they're currently feeling in their life and you're mirroring it back to them and so it's like it is kind of it's really interesting when that happens because like I remember a lot of times when people would ask me about a situation I'd be like what why am I changing my mind all the time about how I feel about it like I couldn't comprehend it um until yeah until like I sat with myself and I was like wait a second like my solar plexus in human design is completely open like I'm taking on other people's emotions I was and I'm like wait I don't like this is how I actually feel about the situation I'm like okay so meaning that those emotions don't belong to me and that is like a really good um, exercise for non-emotional non-emotionals for you guys to do is like ask yourself like does this belong to me and listen to your authority and see if that emotion is yours or not and and if it's not yours it's gonna pass it's gonna go away it's like almost like when you realize that it's not yours it's like a place of releasing and you're like okay it doesn't belong to me and it just goes away on its own so yeah there's like it's 
So it's kind of like at both sides with emotionals and non-emotionals. We need to be like compassionate with one another and to allow space with each other that sometimes like we need to walk away from a conflict. We need to walk away from a conversation because it can be overwhelming for either side. Like one person wants to figure it out, solve it right away, but the other person's overwhelmed by that person's emotions and they're like, no, we need. I need to take a step back because this is too much for me like let me step back and let me go process this and then let's come back especially like letting that other person ride their emotional wave like how many times like in a conflict you know like one person gets upset gets angry they're an emotional and then a couple of days later they reflect on it they come back and they apologize that is classic emotional authority and then sometimes some people may not come back and apologize but that can be just because of you know whatever their wounds and their experiences and where they're at in their life that maybe they don't have the capability to apologize and so yeah there's a lot of interesting things when it comes to like the centers in human design when one person has one and the other person has the other and how it can be misinterpreted because because we all think like oh everybody should be like me like everybody should think like me everybody should make decisions like me but the beauty of human design is that it shows you that no people are not like you and the way you think or the way you process things the way you make decisions is completely different than someone else and then when it comes to like partnerships or family members or friendships once you begin to understand how that other person is then there's this level of compassion and you also then you can begin to understand yourself like I said, a lot of emotional authorities that I've met, when they find out, like, they, they don't know about human design, and then they find out about human design emotional authorities, they're like, they resonate with the material, for sure, everything I say, they resonate with it, but they still make impulsive decisions, they, they still react to things, and they don't use the emotional authority, like, I, I have yet to meet someone who didn't know about human design that actually rode their way before making a decision. Like, they know that when they make spontaneous, like, <laughs> the funny thing is, is that emotionals, you know when you make spontaneous decisions, you know it doesn't pan out, but yet you keep doing it because you're unaware of it. So that's, like, the funny thing. It's, like, every time I do these readings, it's, like, the information lands, and, but they're... But to actually like navigate and experiment and use the human design, like use the authority the way it's meant to be used and per like per your life and what your emotional wave is, a lot of the times like emotional authorities don't actually do it until they learn after the fact. And this is where it is important, like yeah, that you can communicate with your partner with your family members that hey like i need some time to process this like i need some time to make a decision can i get back to you like there is ways to communicate about that or you know like if you're non-emotional like you know this like these emotions are a lot for me like i need to take a step back like i'll be right back like can i just walk away from this conversation um so yeah so kind of like i threw in a lot of information but if this like if this resonated and landed with you like please let me know i appreciate it all i do offer human design readings that is something that i do offer and actually i've, I've done um recently i did my first couple reading and which i actually like enjoyed quite a bit and i had like yeah, it was like two hours um with like both people in the same room which is nice because then i was able to like explain like each person how they are but then they got to hear you know their partner's human design and be like oh this is this is why they are the way they are and like kind of find a sense of understanding because the other centers that i think are also um if you are in a relationship and you have one person who has an undefined open heart and then the other person has a defined heart that is another big one that there is a lot of um misconceptions and uh, misunderstandings when it comes to that and so yeah so like that is like another really big one and it's really interesting like yeah between like the emotional um like the solar plexus and then the heart like these are big things um because again like when we navigate one way we think the other person should be that way and then if they don't then we 
you know, you say like, oh, they're this or that. They're like not doing it. They're not getting shit done. They're lazy, you know, or especially if, you know, you're in a partnership and you both have two completely t- different types. Like one person's a man, the other person's a projector. Like you can't expect the projector to work at the fast pace of the man, gen of like doing the, you know, like doing all the things and getting shit done super fast. So it's really, really like, it's really interesting. So I, after doing that couples reading, like I realized like I wouldn't mind doing this a little bit more. And somebody had mentioned to me, they're like, hey, Julia, you should like offer this as like a service. So this is something I won't be doing many per month because it is a lot of energy for me. I am a projector. So like usually after that, those two hours, I was like, I needed a nap. Um, so there only, I will only offer like a few per month. And so if this something that, you know, you want to learn more about your chart, you know, that your partner, your husband or your wife, like would be interested to learn about their chart as well. And if this is something that can resonate for the both of you, uh, just let me know, like two hours, I charge $444. So you can like, just come into my DMS and like message me, um, I haven't made a link yet uh, for it, uh, but I will be soon. I will be creating like a separate link so that people can go and book directly. Um, but at the moment, I have it. I haven't. So this is like just a, like a little bit of a soft launch. I'm just kind of putting it out there, and yeah, like and then we do like two hours. If you are in Whistler, Tofino, or Yuki, I do it in person, and we can arrange the days and times. If you are online anywhere else in the world, then I will be through Zoom. And so I, yeah, I kind of really do it that way. I find it's interesting and it's really cool, like, because you get to understand each other a little more. The beauty of human design is that it's, it's like almost, it's like, it's like, it makes more logical sense. Like I, that's why I love about it. It's like, it really puts things in a different perspective. It's not like astrology. Um, it's just a little different and so and I do know that having spoken to a lot of like um guys like guys in my life like I know they resonate more with human design than astrology as to what I've seen in my world like in my reality like they I don't want to make an assumption for the rest of the world but what I've seen um that's what I realized so yeah so that's it um so I think yeah we got how many days <laughs> seven days to go in my IG live so hopefully this video was informative I uh, definitely like threw in a lot of nuggets so yeah definitely go to my body graph look at your chart enter your partner's chart enter your friend's chart see who in your life is an emotional authority and who isn't um and yeah just begin to understand them like a little more you know begin to understand each other a little more and if they're not interested in human design, then you could just guide them in a way that you're not talking about human design. Be like, oh, yeah, like, their emotional authority, ride your way. I'll come back to you in a couple days. Don't worry. Don't rush. Right? So there's ways to do it without not actually mentioning, like, oh, I went and uh, found this out. Ways to, like, hold space and guide those around you. Anyways, that's it. I will speak to you all tomorrow. Bye.